the booth. I only say what is true. She don't know Jimmy Choo. What up, though, J Nation? It's your boy, Jay Pitts, and you are watching J Nation TV. It is Wednesday, so you already know what that means. We got a new upload schedule. We got our Psych Wars Sundays. We got Wednesdays where I talk about psych and society. Got a good topic for today. And then we got our reaction videos on Friday. So go ahead and drop a like on this video. For those of y'all that don't know me, my name is Jay Pitts. I do music, I'm a songwriter and a beat maker. And I used to work in a psych war for like six plus years. So I like to share my experience, my stories, hear from you guys and your input and just have a broader conversation about these things based on some of my experiences, opinions, Opinions, and then you guys also bringing in your insights, your life stories, whether it's where you work, whether you're struggling with a certain disorder, um, or you know someone that does. We we just cover an array of different topics, and we're gonna continue to just like dive into certain things because I just think it's fun and important. And and I got a comment I want to shout out. Blessed underscore blah. Shout out to you for your comment. She said, I'm just gonna read it in part. Love that we're getting more of your videos and comments and opinions on disorders and that we can share our stories and opinions without judgment. That part, without judgment. I really want y'all to understand when we come to this comment section, it's okay to not know, it's okay to ask questions and we're just gonna get through things together. It's okay to have different opinions and different approaches. Now, certain facts are facts about the way certain things work, but this is such a spectrum when we're talking about these things that a lot of times it could be completely different from person to person or location to location or gender to gender or society to society. So uh, that's why we talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Like my views on something today might not be my views on something next year, but that's what happens when you talk about things, you get insight from other people. So I just want y'all to know that this is a safe space. Also, don't be taking the things that I say as Bible, as like a doctoral book or a diagnostic criteria. Like, don't do that. Um, definitely take it what you can from it, but do your own research. And um, yeah, just remember that this is also for entertainment purposes. I know y'all be here for the drama. So without further ado on that, I want y'all to tell me in the comment section, what is your favorite beverage? Let me know in the comment section. I'd have to say outside of having a fresh cut open coconut, not like the brown kind, but like the yellow slash orange kind that's real ripe. They be in Florida. I also have some in Africa. I like Goya. I don't know it's a big step on to like um, semi artificial, but um, if you got any island in you or you got any Latin in you, more so like Mexico, Dominican or whatever, my family's from Belize. Goya coconut water is a staple and I grew up on that, loved it. And um, yeah, that's gotta be my favorite drink outside the actual coconut. But let me know your favorite in the comment section. You don't gotta get all fancy on me. If it's water, if it's Coca-Cola, if it's a Moscow Mule, go ahead, throw it in there. It's Wednesday, my dudes. So today's gonna be a very interesting topic. Uh, we got some unfortunate news yesterday. Maybe you guys have heard, maybe not. But at Oxford High School, there was actually a school. Pew, pew. I don't wanna say it because, you know, YouTube is very interesting. So I have to kind of space out how I say things and when I say it. But yeah, that happened at Oxford High School. Apparently they, there were up to eight that were wounded. And of those eight, there are three that are confirmed out of here uh, they are no longer living unfortunately so you know definitely my heart and prayers and, and thoughts go out to the family because yeah I mean I'm familiar with that high school I'm familiar with that area it's like 45 minutes north of Detroit when I was in high school we used to play them in basketball and football so I played in their field I've been in that school um, so to just have that type of connection, to know that something happened to a place that you're semi-familiar with is really surreal. It's one thing to see it around the nation. It's another thing when it's kind of right next door and it's like, wow, like things are really happening out here. But I wanted to open up this conversation today because, you know, we hear a lot of things about people that are behind these big school attacks. And um, there's the whole bullying campaign. There's the whole GUN control conversation. There's the whole, like, is this a, uh, supremacist conversation uh, it's just a parental thing there's all these types of things and one thing that people never get to see that I've seen a lot of times is what it looks like for the kids that are actually behind those uh, pop house those attacks to end up in the ward um, or the kids that were stopped before it actually happened um, I've actually been able to experience uh, a handful of kids that I've talked to, interviewed, sat with, watched that were behind or going to be behind 
a school attack. Um, and it's a perspective that I don't think most people see. We usually see the aftermath um, and we make our judgments after the situation happened. But a lot of times we don't see what actually goes down when these kids are being dealt with or the ones that are stopped from it happening um, or how, you know, just all of that. So I wanted to talk about that today. Now there's an array of different approaches that school administration or law enforcement can take when a kid has been reported to be making some type of threats to the school or the livelihood thereof. Um, there's a lot of different approaches and depending on whose hands they fall into, there might be certain consequences. Obviously these things are not games. You can't be playing around and just saying anything anymore. The same way like 9-11 completely changed the way we do airports, the way we do travel, the way we do everything. You just can't do certain things. Certain stuff just isn't a joke. You can't bring that to the airport unless you're expecting some smoke. And it's the same thing with these kids, but these kids have a huge cognitive dissonance between, you know, what's a joke and what's edgy and what's like, yo, you could get in some serious trouble for this. Um, and that allows a lot of the kids that are serious about doing these acts to slip under the radar um, and to go unnoticed. But let's say they fall in the hands of law enforcement. One of the things that can happen is obviously there can be legal ramifications that can be put on the list. There could be extra steps that they have to go through, including programming and community service in order to help rehabilitate that mind before anything crazy happens. Um, CPS can be involved. Uh, their parents access to their uh, legal weaponry can be restricted or taken away. Um, uh, but on the other side of things, if they fall into the hands of school administration, that is where it really, really can get kind of crazy. You're talking to somebody who's worked in the psych wards and has worked inside of the schools. So I know what it looks like for people uh, to see something that's an issue in schools and let it slide. And I know what it's like for uh, somebody to be recommended from a school administration to be in the psych ward for certain reasons connected to school attacks. And now they're being psycho psychiatrically now they're going under psychiatric analysis or evaluation. One of the questions you might have is what are the conversations like with some of these kids that end up in the ward that have done or attempted some of these things? What, what, what reasoning do they have for doing these things? And I'd like to share that today because I think it's quite relevant and even very interesting to hear that perspective that we don't typically get to hear. There's been tons of reasons that I can name why somebody has decided to think that it was okay to even start thinking about attacking their school or making threats and that type of nature. But it's, a, it's different reasons for everybody. I've talked to kids that have been aggressively bullied and they were tired of being picked on. And that's the common story that we see that usually draws sympathy towards the attacker. Um, um, you know, in some form. Sometimes it's a parental background uh, where they're getting abused at home, maybe they're getting neglected at home, um, uh, maybe there's substances involved. And then uh, also I've talked to kids that just weren't right in the head. Like they're the type that like, yo, if you don't address this with uh, some type of something now, then they're gonna grow up to be serial. They're gonna grow up to be mass attackers, you know? And that's not what we want. One kid I remember in particular was um, in the ward because he had drew a picture of his teacher um, tied in a noose. And he had made specific threats by name to different kids in his school um and reasons why he didn't like those kids some of them of which didn't know that he knew of them but he was the quiet kid that watched people he would draw comics uh he would uh he was very interesting like i i allow myself to not judge him all the way so that i can take more of him in as a person sometimes when you realize somebody's just sick in the head you're just repulsed with them and you can't be around them sometimes for me i like to understand you know, uh, I might talk to the person that is very aggressively socially ignored or kind of cast away. I want to I want to listen to their reasoning. I want to be able to hear them out. Maybe there's a ray of light that I can understand. Like, OK, that's just, this is how you come to this mindset. I could follow that logic, even though this is completely and utterly immoral. I'd at least like to understand you so that, you know, I could see where how you come to the way you think, you know. Um, but yeah, that kid was very calm about it. Um, 
uh, he had a very uh, monotonous way of living in sin. You can tell that he was also always in like deep contemplation, you know. Um, he only spoke when spoken to, but when you tried to speak to him about certain things, he would only open up to if he felt like there was no agenda. He always seemed to be one step ahead too. So I will just let my guard completely down. Like if he was analyzing me, it's like, bruh, do the math, whatever. I'm not here to harm you. I'm gonna ask you these questions and I'm not gonna try to come off secretive or like I'm trying to crack some case. I'ma just listen to you and ask you these questions. And it led to him kind of opening up and kind of sharing because at this point he didn't even care what happened to him. He wanted to be locked away because he felt like if he wasn't, then he would in fact succeed in his plans. Like there, I've had I've talked to somebody like that before, you know. Um, but in most of the cases, there was either somebody dealing with a mental health disorder, they were uh, like that kid, like I just described, or, but most of the times it was somebody that was either being bullied or had it bad at home. It was just trying to express their aggression uh, in a way that will get attention and validation and revenge. Very, very interesting stuff. When we consider how our society handles people like this, typically I find that these kids get the same approach no matter what. You know, there might be different points discussed in therapy or different coping strategies that are provided for these different personality types, but nonetheless, especially around these subjects, there's usually some type of medication to calm them down and to keep them down. You know, like something that's just going to take away that motivation to do those things. Now, when you start talking about like the fact that, hey, would I rather a person live like that or another school attack that happened in people's lives be in jeopardy? You know, obviously we gonna take the road that deals with dealing with that person. Maybe not you, if you're a super humanitarian, which, hey, it's the case. If we can find another humane way to deal with people, which I think we should, uh, that are going through these things, if there's a way to rehabilitate, that would be great. Um, rather than to just throw chemicals at something or to lock somebody away. But sometimes that's the case too, because I tell you in a heartbeat, if it came between somebody else getting medically treated or being locked away and my child being put in danger, I'm not asking no questions. Do what you gotta do. I'm sorry, I don't care what your opinion is, that's just me. Um, but on a larger scale conversation, when we get away from the personal, it's like, okay, what are we actually doing? Uh, as a society to prevent these things from happening. I tell you what, man, I, I experienced going to school in the suburbs and it's a lot different from going to school in the city. Even when I'm in the schools in the city now and, I, and, I, and I, I've been to tons of schools in Detroit um, and elementary, middle school, high schools, and they all got metal detectors. I've seen five-year-olds walk through metal detectors, you know what I'm saying, like as a regular thing. And you know, kids are kind of used to the pandemic and the way things are going, and I don't think we're budging. We keep having the same conversation about these, you know, blank controls, you know, and blank rights. Um, can't say it for YouTube. Um, and that conversation is not budging because I feel like both sides have a point, you know, uh, number one, can't take something that somebody's right. And number two, but if my child is getting hurt, you know, we need to figure out some solution, but we're not budging. We keep having the same conversation. We keep seeing the same movie and the kids that end up being caught up talking like this are either, are either sent through the legal system or they're sent through psychiatric evaluation or they end up succeeding. And we've already had the whole, let's put parents responsible type conversations and whatnot and that's not working either you know i feel like the kids already used to the the big changes that came with the pandemic and the mass mandates and all the different things that need to go down school being shut down for a week all this stuff that's traumatic within itself to go through all those type of societal foundational changes so i don't think it would be so bad to just throw a metal detector up in school i remember working in the high schools in detroit and when that kids would come through the schools not only is security there but they walk through the schools, they get they get their bags checked, and uh, they go through the metal detector. It's a norm that they just live. And they put it all in the inner city when, if you think about it, these things weren't even going on in the inner city. Now the inner city has its own issues and whatnot, but you know, the suburbs where things are supposed to be hunky-dory and people are supposed to be having the resources, having the finances and all those things. It's not the case for everybody, but that's, that's, that's what the picture is. And for you to have all those things, you have such a nice high school community and for these things to still be going on, you know, it just goes to show like you can't blame this on like inner city, not having resources, crime rates, poverty, you know, these are other types of issues, you know what I mean? Um, 
I just don't understand why they're so against putting these types of systems in schools. But I don't know, maybe you guys have a different opinion in, in, in the comment section. It's just like, for them to have all that surveillance in that school, and for them to, uh, uh, even the kids kind of knew. I don't, all right, let me tell y'all a little bit about this case of, as, as far as what I know so far. Uh, I was watching some stuff yesterday and just looking at, uh, listening to what some of the kids had said. Apparently, uh, at Oxford, there was uh, someone that had cut off the head of a, of a deer, a real life deer, brought it into the school and into the school courtyard. Like the only way to get to that courtyard is to go into the school. And so therefore, if somebody believed it was a student and then there were threats made uh, about the principal and their life. And then there was some post about a month prior to the event that happened yesterday talking about like, uh, you know, do you want to D.I.E. And um, students stayed home on this specific day uh, uh, because they knew that something was going on, apparently. Um, so I just thought that was interesting too. You know what? What you know? Um, I'm glad that more students stay home, and that apparently that the whole altercation between the guy that was attacking the school and uh, everything lasted about five minutes before somebody was able to get control of the situation. But it just goes to you know show in this very unique situation that I think is going to unfold and show like a crazy case about kids knowing about these threats, about all the preemptive things that existed before this actual event happened because i'm not saying it could have been prevented but from what i hear based on some of these details that are coming out so far is maybe things could have went a little differently maybe things maybe could have been prevented i'm not going to say totally but it's a possibility that it could have been with a couple of things ha already have been happening you know so you got surveillance you got tips you got deer heads being dropped off in courtyards and then you got posts happening a month prior and kids that knew that oh i shouldn't come to school today but you know we don't have any preemptive measures to make sure that somebody isn't actually following through on these actions i feel like that's a problem you know what i mean but i just wanted to give you guys that insight today show you guys on some of those experiences that i've had that have crossed with that subject um maybe it can extend a broader conversation of how we can handle these situations but i definitely want to know your opinion on whether it's the oxford uh, uh attack or just this whole subject in general and then even some of the things that i shared about the kids i interviewed in psych let me know what you think about that if you got any questions definitely drop it in the comment section i'll be more than happy and willing to discuss these things but thank y'all so much for watching and coming to wednesday's video see you on friday jay pitts out